All right, y'all. That sounds good. All right, let us stand. Let us bow our heads. Our Father God, we want to thank you for this day. Thank you for Father's Day 2022. Yeah. Father God, we thank you for this offering. Thank you for the gifts to yeah. our fathers. Yeah. And Father God, we just love you in a very oh, real yeah. way. And thank you for being our, our Father, our God. Yeah. And when we don't know what else to do, we can lean on you. And Father God, thank you. We praise you and we magnify you. And we just want to say thank, yeah, you. thank you. We love you. We praise you. And we magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. You may be seated. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Later. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. If you have your Bibles handy, turn with me to Proverbs, the third chapter, verses 11 and 12. First, giving unto God who's head of all of our lives and to all of you today. Uh, we thank you for uh, all that you do for the men, for the fathers. Uh, and I just want to say thank you. Put this in your notes. It takes nine months to become a male. But it takes a lifetime to become a man. Yeah. Yeah. To everybody listening by way of uh, YouTube, mm -hmm. your virtual church, and by way of Wolf Radio, mm -hmm. it's a blessing us to be in the service one more time. And I'm not going to hold you long because I know you have a lot of uh, festivities lined up for your dad. Yeah. Uh, if you do have a living father, make sure you let him right. uh, know how much you appreciate him. Yeah. 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 We also put on social media yesterday. Uh, that all superheroes don't wear capes. That's right. And they call them dad. Uh, our society today is trying to minimize mm -hmm. men. Yeah. Trying to devalue and emasculate men. And in some circles, they're trying to objectify men. Bro, hard day. These men, now these young men, I'm keeping mine covered up, but these young men wearing these little short shorts. Uh, what they call them, Davisha, they call them hoochie daddies. Uh, I'm going to tell you, Davisha, you ain't going to see nothing on my Instagram with no hoochie shorts on, all right? Because uh, a real man, I, I keep all my stuff covered up. I'm going to let y'all wonder how cute my legs are. Come on, somebody. Unless you find me on the golf course where I wear my golf shorts. Right. But they're like Brother Brown. They go down to my kneecaps. Right. And some stuff y'all keep covered up. Young men. A real man is not going to wear his pants below his waistline. That's right. Amen. And a real father is going to teach his son how to carry himself. And we're living in a, a, a society now, a generation now, nobody wants instruction. That's true. Amen. But let me tell you something. When we're born in this world, we don't know anything. All right, now. And we need some leadership. Yes, yes. And a man that's worth his salt All right. doesn't mind leading his family. That's right. I saw on TikTok, uh, driving here today, I saw on TikTok, uh, this young lady uh, did a TikTok of another lady. Uh, they had a singles event. Uh, all the singles were supposed to, they had a mixer. And come to find out, only women showed up. <laughs> and so some people say it may have been an all woman's event, or uh, some are saying that mm. men are tired of some of the ways of some of these women, not the women that sweep up because y'all got it going on. I know. I'm talking about them other women that That's don't come right. to this church. That's right, though. There's a way uh, that we ought to deal with each other in relationship. Yeah. Uh, there are men like uh, Felix Baxter and uh, Dr. Walter Sims Sr. There are some good men. Brother Hodge, all the men that you see us sweep up, but there are some good men around. Amen. I golf with good men. A lot of the ladies today are saying, where are all the good men? Hmm. Well, uh, those men are not hanging out at the club on Friday night. All right, now. And we, we know how to have a good time, and we don't need to be in a crowd. All right. Real men... Uh, they they at home yeah. because you know Davisha used to be a time I want to hang out all night, mm -hmm. but by ten o'clock, mm -hmm. I'm I'm in my basketball shorts and my t-shirt. All right, now. 
right, and playing my PlayStation, going to sleep. Come on, somebody. All right, Real men don't hang out in the crowd. You're not going to find uh, good men in some of these low places. And I'm the club. I love the club. But you're looking for a good man. He's not at the club. A good man is at, at Walmart. Uh, stocking up for the week. A real man is at Publix or Win Dixie getting his food. All right. Real men at work. Real men paying their bills. Come on, somebody. All right. All right. And do you know we're living in a society, y'all, mm. that they calling men like Russell Wilson wimps. Yeah. And they use a P word. I won't use a P word in the pulpit. That's right. But they talk about men like Russell Wilson. And all I see Russell Wilson doing is taking care of his family. He's got a good job. He's the new quarterback for the Denver Broncos. He played most of his career with the Seahawks. He's married Sierra. All right. And they want to call Russell Wilson square my, my, my. because he don't have a whole lot of baby mamas. That's right. He don't have a whole lot of, he ain't hanging out in the street. He's working on his crowd. All right. He's a Super Bowl winning quarterback mm -hmm. and people call him square. Well, if square means that you handle your business, well, let us all be square. And a woman that's worth her salt wants a man that take care of his business. That's right. Amen. You want a man that you can count on. You want a man that's consistent. You want a man that honors and keeps his word. I'm a, I'm a, I'm right. a preacher, man. I want to love on daddies today. I want to love on men today. Okay. I love men. I compliment men. When I see good men, I compliment that's them. That's right. Pal. Because a lot of men don't get complimented. A lot of men, I got a good friend of mine. I hope he listens to this message. Mm -hmm. I got a good friend. He lives uh, outside of Pennsylvania. Now, he just moved. And I hope he hears this message. Yeah. The way he takes care of his family, mm -hmm. he has a great family ethic. He has a great work ethic. And his little son just told him the other day, Daddy, you're my hero. Yeah. Now, his teenage daughters, <laughs> they don't have the same message. But when children are young, right. they say what's on their heart. They sure do. And he confided in me the other day. He doesn't feel appreciated. And that's why every time we talk, we play Madden together. He's a good friend of mine. Okay. Every time uh, I talk to him on the phone, I'm always complimenting him. I'm always right. giving him accolades because he doesn't hear it on a regular basis. Right. If you got a good man in your life, ladies and that's children, true. if you got a good man in your life, just love on him. That's right. Tell him thank you. Tell him you appreciate yeah. it. That's what men like to hear. Proverbs 3, 11 and 12, very quickly. My son, does despise not the chastening of the Lord, mm -hmm. neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected, even as a father the son yes. in whom he delights. All right. And what I want to preach for just a moment of your time, because we have a lot of festivities to get to. I'm on my way to the beach because I've been feeling pale lately. I'm going to work on my tan. Go ahead on that. Go ahead on I'm going to do like Sister Maddie did a few weeks ago. She went down to Panama City. I'm going to go to Destin, Florida. All right, now. Two hours and two minutes, and I'll be at the hotel, and I'm going to find me some golf courses to go play on. All right, now. But I couldn't wait to get here this morning. I want to talk about, very quickly, the three dimensions of a fall. Okay. And I can say flat-footed, Brother Hart, I, I, I didn't like my daddy all the time. No. I can remember one case in particular Pam, I won two tickets to a Prince concert. Mm -hmm. I was so happy. Now, I, I wasn't driving at the time. I'm 16. I wasn't driving at the time. We rode the bus to school, and my bus driver had a crush on her. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> but I won through the radio, and I, I would just listen to the radio, and I called the radio system back, and I won two tickets to a Prince concert. All right. I was so excited. I was telling all my classmates, I was so excited. Because Prince, 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 my dude. Erotic city, yes. Yeah. You don't have to be rich. Okay, anyway, I love Prince. So I'm all excited, and, and I had to go to dad. I said, Dad, I want two tickets to a Prince concert. Can I go? Now, he's a Baptist preacher. Christians ain't got no business at a Prince concert. I cursed under my breath to be I ain't, I ain't like some of your friends. Your mom and daddy tell you something you don't like. You just cuss them to their face and call them by their first name. That wasn't me. I was so mad I was dejected. But the only consolation was that following Monday, when I got on the bus and had that envelope, I gave it to my bus driver I had a crush on and smiled and she kissed me on the jaw. So I won. <laughs> 
<laughs> she consoled my broken heart. That's right. But I didn't like my dad all the time. No. He was strict on That's us. Right. Was strict. Three brothers and two sisters. All right. Mm -hmm. But now, as I look back on him, bro, hard. Ah, thank you. He was a good man. Good man. He didn't preach to us all the time. But he led by example. That's right. I don't complain to this day. I told mama the other day on the phone. I don't complain to this day. Y'all see me smile all the time because of my mom and dad. All right, man. See, I, I cannot talk about abusive relationship. I can't talk about being beat. I can't talk about a drunken father. I can't call, talk about a deadbeat dad. Right. That's not my testimony. Right. My testimony is my dad, it was in my life. All right, man. And when I wanted to leave my family for the first time, my daddy told me, Pam, I didn't jump ship. All right, man. And I had to tuck my tail between my legs and, and, and come back to Dothan after seven days. All right. I sat down with him and talked to him because I wasn't happy at home and he simply told me, as a man, you got to suck it up. That's right. Yeah. That's what they said. So I stayed in my son's life today. They were grown and gone, graduated from college, All right. exhausted my 401k to help them get through school. All right, we don't owe nothing now. When I graduate from UAB, I only owe $600. All right. Yeah. See, there's a lot about me y'all don't know, but I'm sharing as That's I get right. older. Yeah. Y'all got a good pastor. Yes, sir. And I want y'all to know I love y'all. And I and my story is I had a good man in my life. That's right. That's and right. And sometimes I I do okay. I uh, before he died and it just broke me down. The night we uh, agreed to take him off the ventilator, it broke me down because our last conversation he told me, "Little Walter, mm -hmm. I'm real proud of you." Yes, sir. You talking about making a man cry? Yeah. Because all of us want the approval of our father. That's right. That's right. But the three dimensions of a father very quickly is three dimensions to a good father. Mm -hmm. Number one, mm -hmm. we are charged to teach our children. That's right. Amen. Amen. You need to teach your children about life because uh, Proverbs 22, 6 says, mm -hmm. train up a child in the way he should go that when he's old, he won't depart from it. That's so right. the danger of having a baby when you're a baby, oh. you ain't even live yourself. There's still milk on your bread. All right, Pastor. These children now uh, doing grown folk stuff. Yes, sir. And these young men pull out game is real weak. All right. And you end up with four and five children before you 25. That's not, that's nothing to brag about. Nope. And that's a that's another conversation. I'm not down in that. Right. But the Bible instructs us men Teaching. to that's teach. Right. Right. The word teacher and parent has the same root word in the Hebrew. Yes. So what does that mean, Dr. Sam? The sole purpose of being a parent yes. is to instruct your children in the ways of God. Oh, that's right. I hated going to church every summer, vacation Bible school, two weeks. No, no, the only no. thing we loved about vacation Bible school was the snacks. No, right. <laughs> and again, you meet new young ladies. My first crush. At 10 years old was a young lady named Melanie. All right. <sighs> oh, okay, I'm back. Y'all right. probably can realize now I like I like women, amen? Yeah. But but our main job as a parent is to train our children. Yeah. Cause when a child is birthed in this world, they don't know anything. Yeah. They don't know right from wrong. Amen. Yeah. They're gonna do wrong, but you gotta teach them to do right. Yeah. You got to teach them to, to love your enemy and, yeah. and do good to those that hate you. Yeah. You got to train that child. You can't just pop off at folks if you don't feel, right. oh, come on now. I finished watching Ozark the other night, and, and one of the episodes, Marty, who's the, the, the protagonist in the, in, the, in, the, in the series, Ozark, Marty, it, it's so many things coming down on him in this one episode. Okay. And they are caught in traffic, him and his wife, and they start arguing. And this man behind them is blowing the horn, and, and he just explodes and hops out the car. And him and this man, man get in a fight, and Wendy, his wife, fighting the man, and both of them end up in jail. Mama. As a father, you have to instruct your children, That's boys true. and girls, sons and daughters, That's you got to learn how to control your anger. Your anger. You got to learn how to control your emotion. Am I talking to anybody? You said, you 
You got to teach your children. You just can't react. Every time somebody does something to you, you can't do it to them. You have to instruct your children. That's right. My daddy told us all the time, you better not start a fight. That's right. But you show sure better finish it. Come on, somebody. Amen. You got to learn how to, how to and not to. You got to learn how to control yourself. All right, man. You got to be able to, to manage your emotion. That's right. Amen. Have you been, Shannon, have you been mistreated in life? Have you been mistreated, Miss Baxter? Bro, Hart, have you been, Miss Hart, have you been mistreated? Davisha, have you been mistreated? If you fought every time you got mistreated, most of us would be in jail right, All right now. now so but my daddy taught me just because, I'm going to tell you something else daddy taught me. Just because somebody whooped at you don't mean you got to whoop All back. Right now, that's true. Come on, somebody. That's so true. My daddy used to teach you sometimes you got to swallow your pride. Yeah. Hello, somebody. My, my daddy taught us a lot, but instruction come from your father. And I'm going to give you an example again. The, 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 the young man, the prodigal, the wasteful son. Uh -huh. One day, Jesus tells a story about a man having two sons. Yeah. And the younger went to the father and said, Daddy, I'm ready for my inheritance. All right. So that bears the question, how did the younger son uh -huh. know what his inheritance was unless his father uh -huh. had taught him? All, right. All throughout the Bible, the Bible says, sons, forget not the laws of your father. All right. Mothers do a thing. Mothers are important, but instruction come from their father. That's right. You just feel better when daddy is around. Come on, somebody. That's right. That's Number two, now the first dimension is instruction. Mm -hmm. You got to teach your children about some of the, the mistakes that you have yeah. made. That's right. Let your children know you ain't been perfect. Or no. You ain't been perfect. No. You done made some mistakes. Come on, somebody. Bro Brown, have you made mistakes? You got to let your children know, I haven't been good all my all right, life. No, no, no. So you teach them instructionally a lot of ways from books, from the textbook. Then mostly you teach from your life. Yeah, yes, my yes. dad, a lot that I learned from my dad, I saw him. That's right. I never heard. He, he never called my mama the B word. He never called her the P word. Right. He never called her out of her name in front of my brothers and sisters. All right, yeah. And some of y'all ladies let me and talk to you any kind of way. Yeah. But if you got an example from your father, you know a man is not to talk to you sideways. Y'all better right. help me. Y'all might have quiet on Dr. Sam. Right. I'm going to get a lot of pushback on this message, but I got to preach it anyway. Preach. You learn a lot from your father. And again, my daddy didn't preach other than a lot of people thought my daddy just sit us down and preach to us all the time. That's but right. he taught us more how he lived. That's right. Yeah. That's it. Number two. Hmm. Not only is a, is a father supposed to instruct you, but number two, a father supposed to correct you. That's right. Yeah. Amen. The worst phrase we hated growing up was wait till your father gets home. That's what they said. <laughs> we tried to be nice. After we got in trouble, we tried to be nice uh -huh. so mama would forget. But time daddy pulled in that driveway, Jesus. That's it. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. All right, Pastor. We tried that right then, Sister Baxter. Yeah, but mama said, wait till your daddy Come gets on. home. That's that word. I like that song by us. Your dad is home, but that's a whole nother vein. <laughs> All right, Divisha, I see you. That's a whole nother sermon. Amen. Amen. But you're supposed to correct your children. There's two ways you ought to correct according to the Bible. All right. You correct physically mm -hmm. and you correct proactively. And I'm explaining. Right. I know that I got on my school. Yes, yeah, a little deep right now, but that's just walk right. with me. That's all right. The Bible says, mm -hmm. spare the rod. Spoil the child. That's corporal punishment. Mm -hmm. This generation says now you don't have to right. chastise or whip your children. All right, now. You're right. There are other ways, right. according to the, 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 the sociologists and the psychologists, there are other ways to discipline your child. But the Bible says yes. if you spare the rod, you're going to spoil, ruin that child. Yes. Because if you let that child do what he wants oh, to do, nobody is going to be able to handle that child. I need right. some help. Amen. Amen. I challenge y'all to go watch uh, Big Daddy with Adam Sandler. Mm -hmm. And his brother had an illegitimate child with another woman who dies in the movie. All right. 
And one day the little child just appears on Adam Sandler's doorstep. And he told his friend, because his friend was going to go back to Hong Kong to work, and he told his friend, I'll keep little man till you get back. And so Adam Sandler didn't know anything about children. So his first, his first attempt was just to let the little man do what he wanted. He's five years old. Let him do what he wanted to do. So he ate ketchup. He never took a bath. He walked around in a duck suit. And when Adam signed him up for school, when the teacher called him when he went to pick him up, the, the teacher said he's being laughed at because he stinks. He doesn't really know how to behave in class. He needs some instruction. So Adam corrected his ways. He, he, he told the little boy, we got to take a bath. He made it a game. We got to take a bath every day. You got to eat more than just ketchup. And by the end of the show, Adam Sandler adopted the little man. But I just said that to say this. If you cannot allow the child to be the parent, I need some help. Because when a man is around, even a daughter and a son, but a daughter, more importantly, learns how to talk to a man, how she deals with her father. That's right. That's true. The reason some of these women talk in sideways today, yeah. because they didn't have a good father presence in their life. That's true. Because yeah. your dad, you talk sideways to, to Dr. Walter Sim Singer. Hmm. First thing you say, what you say? Yeah, I know that. <clears throat> Hello, somebody. Y'all right. mighty quiet. No, right. So I correct corporally with the rod of correction. Yeah. How many of the saints that they got whoopings when you were growing up? Hello, are you okay? Are you alive? I never spent one night in jail. Yeah, me. That's right. I didn't get hooked on drugs. I had a good father. That's right. Now I got a little bug wild when I left. Uh, Northland Avenue. All right. When I left Inns, I got a little while. Uh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. But while I was under his roof, bro, hard, what did your daddy teach you? Root hole or die pole? Dr. Sin, what the heck does that mean? Amen. In this emoji acronymic society, what in the world does root hog die pole mean? It simply means do what I say or go on and get your own little hood. What they said. Abide by my rule, or you can't live here. That's what they said. Yes, sir. Two kings can't live in the same castle. No. Two queens can't live in the same castle. Right. I'm enjoying this sermon today. Right. I know about that. Good men. I'm talking about how man ought to rule his house. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. don't want nobody telling us what to do, but you need instruction. You need correcting because right. we get sideways sometimes. That's right. That's right. Hello? And that's the reason some of us are having a hard time on these people's job because we don't want nobody telling us what to do. Everybody want to be the CEO. Yeah. But nobody want to flip no hamburgers. Come on, somebody. You're right. You're right. Companies are struggling now because they can't find any people to work. I saw on my news feed the other day, Amazon, uh, it, it leaked a letter leaked out on Amazon that they can't find people to work for them. Well, first of all, based so while you spend the money going to space, you got to pay your folks right, right and give them some good working environments. But anyway, that's another conversation. That's right. That's right. And let me swerve a little bit. Let me say this. President Joe Biden, I'm going to swerve. Uh -huh. And I'm chasing the rabbit, so I'm going to get in the weeds a little bit. Okay. President Biden has no control over the gas prices. No. No. Quit allowing folks to tell you, well, it's our president. He, he, okay. he the reason gas so high and chicken is all as high as it is. He has no control no over that. Control over These it. corporations, you look at BP, Exxon, and all those oil corporations, oh, yeah. they have profit margins of 450%. They sure do. Joe Biden has no control over the greed oh, no. of corporate America. Sure a man selling fan. Right. No. And it is sad that America, it is sad that America is so filled with greedy people. Yes, Lord. Y'all don't hear me. America is greedy. And these same folks that hollering about Joe Biden yes. allow President, former President Donald Trump to swindle them, grip them out of $250 million. Right. I don't want to hear you complaining about gas when you giving that light-skinned brother all your money oh, and you know he's putting it in his pocket. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something else about January 6th. Oh, yeah. you, have, you let me and Devisha and Sus Baxter and Shannon and Pam go and march the Capitol. All right. You're right. Let, let me tell you four things that would have happened. One, the National Guard would have been called. Sure 
Number two, we would have been shot and killed. Number three, it would have been blood on the step of the capital. And number four, the people that weren't killed are being jailed, case closed. And Fox News will cover that. All right. Amen, Dr. So don't think I'm not paying attention. We are living in a world with double standards, but anyway, I digress. So number one, a father instructs. Number two, he corrects two ways. Physically, and I'm not talking abuse, but I'm talking... Uh, you get that when you four five years old, you get that booty tagged a little bit. Yes. So when you 12, 13, 14, you at least think twice of going left on your parents. And number two, to avoid the whipping, yes. I'm going to correct you proactively. What does that even mean, Dr. Zen? I'm going to spend time with you. Spend time with your children. All right, that's true. I got a picture of Facebook loves memories. And so I got a picture the other day, Sus so Baxter, yes. of me taking Jonathan and Jordan to Sioux City. <laughs> For Easter to get them an Easter suit. All right now. And I remember they played basketball and they finally won a, a championship at Emmanuel Christian. At every game they had, I was there. All right now. Every time they had a, a choir performance, I was there. All right. I wasn't I wasn't perfect, but no. I did what I was supposed to do. They ate every day. They lived in a good house, mm -hmm. and both of them are college graduates. All Come right. on, somebody. All right, they have a good two kids to get through this life. All right, now. Jonathan turned 26 June the 9th yeah. and, and I texted him midway through the day. I said, happy birthday, Jonathan. <laughs> and he texted me back. Uh, Thank you, daddy. Happy belated birthday. All right, now. He'll do it. I said, won't God do it? He'll do it. I told mama that we text each other. She said, that's good. You know, I, ain't, I don't have no. to worry about. Uh, uh, now, now, if Davisha was my daughter, me and her be talking all the time. But with a young man, yeah. a son, yeah. we text you good. I'm good. That's, how, that's all we need to say. Amen. Amen. So proactively, a father spent time with his children yeah. and, 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 and uninterrupted time. You're not on your phone and they're doing that thing. I, I remember when I was really into golf when they were, when they were little. Uh, they got a joy, and I could get away with being on the golf course if they could come and drive the car for me. Yeah. Boy, they love that. We wrecked, almost wrecked a few times, but we had a good time. They drove the car, and they enjoyed that. But, Father, yeah. spend time with your children. Yes, sir. You see many things on social media where uh, daddies have little girls, and they have tea parties, and yeah. the little girl dolls the man up with makeup and mascara and put a wig on him, man. And these muscular uh, uh, he men, men, but they do what they do for their That's daughters. Right. That's right. That's so right. men, I know a lot of us don't like doing that, but a good man wants to spend time yeah, with. Baby. You look at Brother Baxter. Yeah. When his kids yeah. were little, he spent time. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it goes back to what I said a moment ago. Mm -hmm. When I sampled my fathership and asked them why they loved their father, they simply said he was there for me. Yeah. He spent time with we learn about God through our heavenly, through yeah. our natural father. And thirdly, lastly, mm -hmm. the Bible says a father delights in his children. Yes, sir. And if you look up that word delight in the Hebrew, it means that a father adores and loves his children. I got another good friend I play football with on Madden, and I talked to him the other day. He has three children. Mm -hmm with three different women, but he loves all of his oh, children. Yeah. He's got a 20, he got two sons in the 20s, and his youngest son is four. All right. But he loves all of his children. He got three baby mamas, and all he right. said he's learned some things. Mm -hmm. And he said, now nah, I used to chase women, but mm -hmm. I'm chasing my legacy now. All right, now. And he's 42 now, mm -hmm. and he's learned some things. And, and, and you learn, and another thing I learned uh, from my father, Time will slow walk you down. I used to love to hear him say that. He said, time will slow walk you down. So you running wide. You wide open in your 20s. All right. You a little more wide open in your 30s. That's right. But when you hit your 40s and 50, you kind of throttle back a little bit. All right, now. And you learn, I can't do what I used to do. <laughs> I can't do it. I, I, I want to preach right now, but I got I to gotta calm down. Yeah, God is good, ain't he? All the time. Uh, another example we have of a good father in the Bible, I referred to him a moment ago, the father of the prodigal son. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, one day he wakes up, the young son wakes up and go to his father. Yeah, yeah. 
Because like many young people, tired of a listening to your father and being restricted. All right. So one day he goes to his father and said, I want my inheritance. Yeah, yeah. Notice the scripture didn't say he went to his mama. All right, nope. Ah, cause mama would have told him to go sit down somewhere. <laughs> but daddy said, ah, oh, let me write you a check. Yeah, yeah. His daddy did not try to dissuade him. So the young son went to a far country. All right. The Bible said he went and wasted all of his money. Yeah, yeah. See, prodigal does not mean lost, uh -huh. uh, but it does mean waste. Yeah, yeah. Another thing I learned from my father is that if you waste what you have, right. uh, one day you're going to want something. Yeah. yeah, you need to preserve uh, the things that you have because right. uh, you may not have it always. Uh, that young man spent his money. Uh, I'm watching a new series now. Uh, it's called P Valley. Right. Yeah, and the Bible said from the older son uh, that the young son wasted his money on harvest and wild living. I wish I had some help. Uh, he parted so hard, Shannon, until uh, one day he reached in his pocket uh, and didn't have no money. He ran out of money so much that uh, one day he got hungry. Right. Yeah, and he began to look for a job. Yeah. And the only job he could find was feeding pigs. All right. yeah. yeah, you know it's a bad thing if you never worked in your life. All right. uh, and now all you can do is feed pigs. I wish I had some help. Look at your neighbors. I done been in the hall pen before. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, he got so low, Sister Thomas. Yeah. Uh, that slop look like something good yeah, to eat. Yeah. I'm here to tell you right now, it is sad uh, that this generation, right. uh, mamas and daddy got to cook two and three meals. Because right. little Johnny will tell you, well, I don't want that. I don't want that. Door dash me some Chick-fil-A. But let me tell you, when I was growing up, yeah. if mama made pinto beans, and cornbread and neck bone, yeah. guess what you better eat that night or you gonna go to bed hungry. Yeah. This young man found himself hungry and he almost ate slop. All right, so now. Uh, but his mind rolled back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and he said, in my father's house. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, in my father's house. Yeah. Uh, in my daddy's house. All right. uh, in my daddy's house. Yeah. Even the servants are eating well. Yeah. I need some help right now. In my daddy's house, yeah. uh, the air conditioner is on. Yeah. Uh, in my daddy's house, yeah. uh, the pool is full of cold water. In my daddy's house, yeah. uh, I had a change of clothes. Right. In my daddy's house, yeah. uh, didn't have to worry about the light bill. Right. In my daddy's house, yeah. uh, I had a roof over my head. Yeah. One of the most powerful verses in the whole Bible, uh, Luke 15, 17 said, and he came to yeah. himself. Yeah. Look at your neighbor. My daddy taught me uh, when God talked to you, yeah. you will know it for yourself. Ain't he all right? Ain't God all right? The young man began to walk back home. His daddy was on the back porch waiting for him. His daddy saw him coming up the road. And he said to the oldest son, he said to the mama, he said to the servant, kill the fatty calf. Cause my son that was dead is alive. And I'm so glad I learned from my daddy. If you mess up, you can come back home. Yeah. Ain't he all right? Ain't God all right? Have you tried him? Won't he be a way out of no way? Have you tried him? Have you been in the whole pen of life? I physically left home too soon all right. in my college year. Yeah. And one day my daddy preached this very son. And when he opened the door of the church, I went to the office, shook his hands, and said, Dad, I'm going to come back home for a little while. And he said, come on, come son. On. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. See, I don't talk about what I heard somebody else That's talk right. about. Oh, my God. Let us stand as we open the doors of the church. Hallelujah. We're going to have altar call right for y'all. The yeah. doors of the church open and maybe one today, let for that, uh, let for Christian experience, Hallelujah. candidate for baptism. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Yeah.
God is good. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. None but the righteous. None but the righteous. None but the righteous shall see God. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Yeah, I do. Take me to the wall. Yeah. 